All right, so today I'm going to be doing a video comparing genuine Heiko soldering iron tips to non-genuine Heiko soldering iron tips. So these tips are all compatible with my Heiko FX Triple Eight D, and this is obviously the genuine one. I bought this from DigiKey, and it's got the Heiko branding all over it and the little sort of safety seals and everything in the packaging. And these guys are non-genuine Heiko soldering iron tips. This is a bag of 10 of them that came from Amazon. Now I think this is probably fairly obvious, but the main reason why you'd want to go with the knockoff tips is because of price. This whole bag of 10 tips costs around $10, so you're looking at about $1 per tip, actually a little bit less than that usually. Whereas the single genuine Heiko tip costs around $5 to $6. So if you wanted to get the genuine version of every tip that was in this bag, it would cost you $50 to $60. So with these tips, there's basically two questions that come up. One is do they perform as well as the genuine Heiko tips? And two is will they last as long as a genuine Heiko tip? One issue with these two questions is that depending on who you buy these tips from, the quality is not going to be guaranteed to be the same. Usually a pack of 10 like this will go for around $10, but I've seen them as low as $2 for a pack of 10 like this. I doubt that the $2 set of tips and the $10 set of tips is the same quality. Also, the quality on these is pretty much a guarantee that it's gonna be lower than a genuine Heiko tip, but are they close enough to be usable? All right, so I'm gonna answer my second question first, that question being the one on longevity. Now, truth be told, when I first got my soldering iron, I got a couple packages of these knockoff tips to go with it. And the other package is here, and they have been fairly extensively used, and I'm still using them. I'm using them on this soldering iron. It's definitely not the greatest thing ever. I've done a separate video on this iron, which I'll have to put a card in for, but it's functional and it works reasonably well. Anyhow, I have not managed to completely wear out any one of these tips. One of my most used ones, probably this guy. This is a real fat chisel tip. And as you can see, all of these tips should have a real nice coating of solder on them still, and that's because I always tin the things before I put them away. A lot of the black marks that you're seeing on these tips are is uh, flux residue, not uh, bad spots in the tip or tips or anything. This tip I have heavily used for carving in the plastic. <laughs> that's why that one's so bad. I, I tend to not have much of a use for this tip to actually solder with, but it works good for cutting uh, plastic and things. And of course, it's only worth about a dollar, so I don't really care about it. But most of these are still in pretty good shape in terms of the plating and everything. I know this particular tip has seen a lot of use and it's still in good shape. And most of my uh, my chisel tips get used a lot too and they're still in great shape. So in terms of longevity, at least the particular tips that I have seem to be pretty good. Now I will also note that I have this bag of genuine Heiko tips that I've been using for the last couple of years and I haven't managed to wear any of these out either. Now obviously you're expecting the longevity of the Heiko tips to be pretty good and it is. But what you're not guaranteed, of course, is the longevity on the knockoff tips, which also, at least with the tips that I have, seem to be pretty good. Unfortunately, I don't have a link to these guys anymore. Maybe you can find information about them uh, off of that barcode or something. Uh, I'm not even sure if they're still for sale, but they seem pretty generic. You seem to be able to get these tips uh, quite readily on Amazon or eBay. One other note on quality of these guys is that some of them don't seem to be machined quite right. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to tell because they got a lot of solder on this tip, but it looks like the top of this tip isn't completely straight, and it's not. If you look at, that's the 3.2 millimeter tip, which is this one. You can see how that's supposed to look, and on this bag of tips, it does look pretty nice, but this one, but this one came from the factory being messed up, so. Anyway, the uh, manufacturing quality on these tips isn't the greatest. All right, so moving on to performance testing, I have two identical tips, one being the genuine Heiko, which is what's sitting in the iron right now. And I'll just show you that it is. I'll show you the model of the tip and everything that's on here. So this is a T18-D24, which means that it is a 2.4 millimeter 
chisel tip and you can see the Heiko lead free logo and all that on there. These knockoff tips don't have any information on them. They're just the sort of shiny nickel or whatever these are plated in. In terms of like physical differences between these two, they feel like they're about the same weight. Unfortunately, I don't have a good scale. And if you look at the back end of them, and I can get the camera to focus on it, the fake one is on the right here, and it looks like the walls of the fake one are just a little bit thinner than the genuine one. So we are going to go ahead and start with our genuine Heiko tip, and we're gonna fire up our soldering iron. I've got it set to, I think, 690 degrees Fahrenheit, which is usually what I would have it set to. And I do solder with lead-free solder, so it's a little bit hotter than what you would maybe normally have. So anyway, today I'm gonna to be soldering wires onto a couple of fuses. We're gonna do one with the fake Heiko tip and one with the genuine Heiko tip. Now obviously soldering wires onto fuses isn't the recommended way to use fuses because they're a pain in the butt to change if you do this, but I don't really have any good fuse holders. So we're gonna go ahead and solder wires straight onto these guys. Now I will also say that a 2.4 millimeter chisel tip would probably not be my first choice when it comes to soldering something like this. I would probably normally use a 3.2 millimeter chisel tip because I'd give a little bit more surface area on the tip itself and it would allow me to heat this up a little bit easier. But what I'm thinking is with that smaller tip, it should be a little bit easier to tell the differences between the Heiko and the knockoff Heiko. All right, so I think I have my focus adjusted so you should be able to see the fuse and everything up here quite nicely. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and just clean off that iron tip. Get it looking nice and shiny. So you can see your tip's nice and clean there. I'm gonna do the same thing with both of them. It still has maybe a little bit of solder left on it, but that is actually a good thing because that will help it transfer heat a little bit better. And you can see how easy it tin that little wire. It's kind of expected, it's only an 18 gauge wire. So uh, with that done, I'm gonna go ahead and try to put a little bit of solder on the end caps of this fuse. And that's not too big of a deal. So I can do the next one. And there we go. And then of course I'm just going to melt the two things together. That doesn't look great, does it? Go ahead and get a little bit more solder on that, assuming I can get the wire to stay in place. I think the uh, end caps of these fuses are a little bit oxidized, so it's kind of making this difficult, but that's not too big of a deal. Tin up this other little piece of 18 gauge wire. I do have a nice blob of solder on this tip at this point, which is going to probably help greatly with the thermal conduction. But anyway, you can see how effortless that was to solder those two wires onto the fuse. So we're gonna go ahead and change out our tip and we'll see how much of a difference that makes. And you can see the soldering job that I just did with that tip there. That was nice, quick, easy. Solder looks like it's stuck to the caps pretty well. And that should be a fairly good job. So we'll switch out our tip and we'll try that again. All right, so I have swapped out the genuine Heiko tip with the Faco tip, and we're gonna go ahead and do a similar thing. We'll clean our tip off, and then we'll tin this piece of wire first. Not much of an issue. And I'll use that nice little blob of solder to try to heat up the end cap of the fuse. Again, not a big deal. Of course, we're at the same temperature and everything. Second one was a little bit harder, but not much of a difference really. And we'll take this and try to fuse it onto our fuse. There's one piece of wire. And there is the other one. And I'll give you a look at soldering job there. 
not too bad for some reason the one on the right's a little bit more uh, dull than it really should be but it's probably more of a lack of flux thing than it is a issue of the soldering iron tip but you can just uh, look at the other one again now is it surprising that the knockoff tip worked as well as it did for this well maybe not the caps on the ends of these fuses really aren't all that thick or anything so they don't have a whole lot of thermal mass to them so it probably doesn't take too much to heat them up so what i think is we're going to have to try to find a more challenging opponent for that tip all right so this should be a little bit more of a challenging test i have the soldering iron now turned down to 660 degrees so that's going to make it a little bit harder to get the heat into the wire and also the Thing that we're soldering now is a piece of 10 gauge wire as opposed to that little fuse cap so i've still got a little bit of solder left on here yeah it looks like the tip's still reasonably clean so we'll go ahead and just flow a bit of fresh solder on the underside of that wire and we should be able to get it to transfer heat throughout the entire wire As you can see, I'm kind of struggling to uh, get the wire to melt or the solder to melt on the top of the wire. And again, this tip is really way too small for this. And honestly, the temperature should probably be set up quite a bit higher as well. It's definitely having a rough time with this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the temperature back up to 690 where it was. And I'm gonna let the wire cool down a bit and I'm also gonna let the soldering iron get back up the temperature. And then we'll try this again. Alrighty, we should be good to go ahead and restart this test. So let's uh, go ahead and try it again. Go ahead and clean this tip and put a bit of fresh solder on it. And we'll put it back under the wire. Yeah, this looks a little bit more promising. Still not able to melt solder on the top of the wire. Kind of melt solder on the side of it, but not real well. Of course, the issue is the copper is taking all the heat out of that tip and just transmitting it down the wire, more or less. And if we kind of cheat and get some solder flowing through the side of the wire, and get it going through the top as well and there we did eventually get it to flow all the way through that wire so now we'll go ahead and repeat that test with the genuine Heiko and see if it's any better all right I've got the genuine Heiko tip swap back in we'll go ahead and see how this does we're also I have it set at 690 still so we'll go ahead and put this on here And it looks like it's going to struggle about as much as our cheap knockoff tip did. And maybe not as much. That's that's quite a bit easier. <clears throat> Once I got it started, anyway. All right, I do want to show what these uh, tinned pieces of wire look like. Because they're not perfect. I didn't quite feed enough solder on them. And what they did is a little bit interesting. But uh, here on the... This was the one that we did with the genuine tip. You can kind of see how... I didn't quite get enough solder down to the back side, but it still kind of flowed in between the uh, individual wires and everything, so it looks decent still, and it's mostly tinned. But if you look at our our wire end that was done with the Faco, you can see the top has a nice ball of solder on it. If you flip it over, 
This solder really didn't penetrate through very well. It might even be able to separate these wires out still, which I definitely couldn't do with the one that was done with the Heiko, yeah. You can still separate wires out of that. So this one I don't think got quite hot enough, and as I said, I had to cheat it. So this one is more wrapped in solder that was melted around the outside than it is tinned properly. Probably still good enough, and I could definitely do better if I heated it for longer. This one is really pretty good. The only thing is I didn't really put enough solder in it. You can see where it's starting to come through though. All right, so in conclusion, should you buy genuine Heiko tips or fake Heiko tips? So for me personally, I will continue to buy and use the genuine Heiko tips for my Heiko FX Triple Eight D. If you're using one of those like Yihua 936 soldering stations, you know, the ones that you can get for like 20 bucks or something that are actually fairly decent uh, temperature controlled soldering stations, or if you're using something like this, uh, it's probably not really worth it to you to buy these tips. Uh, they are probably going to perform better on that soldering iron, but also your soldering station costs $20 and a single one of these tips costs like six. So for something like this, to me, it would make sense to buy these cheaper tips and just kind of live with it. I'm gonna to continue to use the genuine tips in my genuine soldering iron, and I'm going to continue to use the knockoff tips in my cheap soldering iron. So anyway, if you like that little comparison video, hit that like button. If you have your own experiences with these soldering iron tips or your own opinions, go ahead and leave those down in the comments. And if you wanna see some of the stuff that I build with this equipment, click on that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.